K driving theory test. Practice test number 9. Question 1. Which arm signal tells you that the car you're following is going to pull up? Correct answer. B. Explanation. There may be occasions when drivers need to give an arm signal to confirm their intentions. This could include bright sunshine at a complex road layout, when stopping at a pedestrian crossing or when turning right just after passing a parked vehicle. You should understand what each arm signal means. If you give arm signals, make them clear, correct and decisive. 2. On a road where trams operate, which of these vehicles will be most at risk from the tram rails? A. Buses. B. Cars. C. Cycles. D. Lorries. Correct answer. C. Cycles. Explanation. The narrow wheels of a bicycle can become stuck in the tram rails, causing the cyclist to stop suddenly, wobble or even lose balance altogether. The tram lines are also slippery, which could cause a cyclist to slide or fall off. 3. Which instrument panel warning light would show that headlights are on full beam? The correct answer. A. Explanation. You should be aware of all the warning lights and visual aids on the vehicle you're driving. If you're driving a vehicle for the first time, you should familiarize yourself with all the controls. Warning lights and visual aids before you set off. 4. Why is a toucan crossing different from other crossings? A. Cyclists can use it. B. It's controlled by a traffic warden. C. It's controlled by two flashing lights. D. Moped riders can use it. Correct answer. A. Cyclists can use it. Explanation. Toucan crossings are shared by pedestrians and cyclists. Who are permitted to cycle across? They're shown the green light together. The signals are push-button operated and there's no flashing amber phase. 5. What does this sign mean? A. Give way. B. No through road. C. T junction. D. Turn left ahead. Correct answer. C. T junction. Explanation. This type of sign warns you of hazards ahead. Make sure you look at each sign and road marking that you pass, so that you don't miss any vital instructions or information. This particular sign shows there's a T junction with priority over vehicles from the right. 6. Why should motorcyclists wear bright clothing? A. Drivers often do not see them. B. It helps keep them cool in summer. C. The colors are popular. D. They must do so by law. Correct answer. A. Drivers often do not see them. Explanation. Motorcycles and scooters are generally smaller than other vehicles and can be difficult to see. Wearing bright clothing makes it easier for other road users to see a motorcyclist approaching. Especially at junctions. 7. You're approaching a mini roundabout. What should you do when you see the long vehicle in front signaling left but positioned over to the right? A. Follow the same course as the lorry. B. Keep well back. C. Overtake on the left. D. Sound your horn. Correct answer. B. Keep well back. Explanation. At mini roundabouts. There isn't much room for a long vehicle to maneuver. It will have to swing out wide so that it can complete the turn safely. Keep well back and don't try to move up alongside it. 8. You see street lights but no speed limit signs. What will the speed limit usually be? A. 30 miles per hour. B. 40 miles per hour. C. 50 mph. D. 60 miles per hour. Correct answer. A. 30 miles per hour. Explanation. 
The presence of street lights generally indicates that there's a 30 miles per hour speed limit, unless signs tell you otherwise. 9. What does this traffic sign mean? A. Give priority to oncoming traffic. B. No overtaking allowed. C. One-way traffic only. D. Two-way traffic. Correct answer. A. Give priority to oncoming traffic. Explanation. Priority signs are normally shown where the road is narrow and there isn't enough room for two vehicles to pass. Examples are narrow bridges, roadworks and where there's a width restriction. Make sure you know who has priority. Don't force your way through. Show courtesy and consideration to other road users. 10. Which of these should you allow extra room when overtaking? A. Bicycle. B. Lorry. C. Road sweeping vehicle. D. Tractor. Correct answer. A. Bicycle. Explanation. Don't pass cyclists too closely, as they may need to veer around a pothole or other obstacle. Be buffeted by side wind. Be made unsteady by your vehicle. Always leave as much room as you would for a car, and don't cut in front of them. 11. Where can you find reflective amber studs on a motorway? A. On the left-hand edge of the road. B. On the right-hand edge of the road. C. Separating the lanes. D. Separating the slip road from the motorway. Correct answer. B. On the right-hand edge of the road. Explanation. At night or in poor visibility. Reflective studs on the road help you to judge your position on the carriageway. 12. What should you do when you see this sign as you travel along a motorway? A. Change lane. B. Leave the motorway at the next exit. C. Move onto the hard shoulder. D. Turn left immediately. Correct answer. B. Leave the motorway at the next exit. Explanation. You'll see this sign if the motorway is closed ahead. Pull into the left-hand lane as soon as it's safe to do so. Don't wait until the last moment before you move across. Because the lane may be busy and you'll have to rely on another driver making room for you. 13. What's a rumble device designed to do? A. Alert you to a hazard. B. Alert you to low tire pressure. C. Give directions. D. Prevent cattle escaping. Correct answer. A. Alert you to a hazard. Explanation. A rumble device consists of raised markings or strips across the road. Designed to give drivers an audible, visual and tactile warning. These devices are used in various locations. Including in the line separating the hard shoulder and the left-hand lane on the motorway and on the approach to some hazards, to alert drivers to the need to slow down. 14. Who has priority at an unmarked crossroads? A. No one has priority. B. The faster vehicle. C. The larger vehicle. D. The smaller vehicle. Correct answer. A. No one has priority. Explanation. Practice good observation in all directions before you emerge or make a turn. Proceed only when you're sure it's safe to do so. 15. When are you allowed to use hazard warning lights? A. When parked on double yellow lines to visit a shop. B. When stopped and temporarily obstructing traffic. C. When traveling during darkness without headlights. D. When traveling slowly because you're lost. Correct answer. B. When stopped and temporarily obstructing traffic. Explanation. You mustn't use hazard warning lights while moving. Except to warn traffic behind when you slow suddenly on a motorway or unrestricted dual carriageway. Never use hazard warning lights to excuse dangerous or illegal parking. 16. Which of the following should you do before stopping? A. 
Flash the headlights. B. Select a higher gear. C. Sound the horn. D. Use the mirrors. Correct answer. D. Use the mirrors. Explanation. Before pulling up, check the mirrors to see what's happening behind you. Also assess what's ahead and make sure you give the correct signal if it will help other road users. 17. Powered vehicles used by disabled people are small and hard to see. How do they give early warning when on a dual carriageway? A. They'll have a flashing amber light. B. They'll have a flashing blue light. C. They'll have a flashing green light. D. They'll have a flashing red light. T. Correct answer. A. They'll have a flashing amber light. Explanation. Powered vehicles used by disabled people are small, low, hard to see and travel very slowly. On a dual carriageway, a flashing amber light will warn other road users. 18. You've just passed your practical test. You don't hold a full license in another category. Within two years you get six penalty points on your license. What will you have to do? A. Reapply for your full license immediately. B. Retake only your practical test. C. Retake only your theory test. D. Retake your theory and practical tests. Correct answer. D. Retake your theory and practical tests. Explanation. If you accumulate six or more penalty points within two years of gaining your first full license it will be revoked. The six or more points include any gains due to offenses you committed before passing your test. If this happens you may only drive as a learner until you pass both the theory and practical tests again. 19. What can cause excessive or uneven tire wear? A. A faulty braking system. B. A faulty electrical system. C. A faulty exhaust system. D. A faulty gearbox. Correct answer. A. A faulty braking system. Explanation. If you see that parts of the tread on your tires are wearing before others, it may indicate a brake, steering or suspension fault. Regular servicing will help to detect faults at an early stage and this will avoid the risk of minor faults becoming serious or even dangerous. 20. Where are you most likely to be affected by side winds? A. On a busy stretch of road. B. On a long, straight road. C. On a narrow country lane. D. On an open stretch of road. Correct answer. D. On an open stretch of road. Explanation. In windy conditions, care must be taken on exposed roads. A strong gust of wind can blow you off course. Watch out for other road users who are particularly likely to be affected, such as cyclists, motorcyclists, high-sided lorries and vehicles towing trailers. 21. What type of vehicle displays this yellow sign? A. A broken down vehicle. B. A private ambulance. C. A school bus. D. An ice cream van. Correct answer. C. A school bus. Explanation. Buses which carry children to and from school may stop at places other than scheduled bus stops. Be aware that they might pull over at any time to allow children to get on or off. This will normally be when traffic is heavy during rush hour. 22. What should you do when you're following a motorcyclist along a road that has a poor surface? A. Allow extra room in case they swerve to avoid potholes. B. Allow the same room as normal to avoid wasting road space. C. Drive closely so they can see you in their mirrors. D. Overtake immediately to avoid delays. Correct answer. A. Allow extra room in case they swerve to avoid potholes explanation, to avoid being unbalanced. 
a motorcyclist might swerve to avoid potholes and bumps in the road. Be prepared for this and allow them extra space. 23. How should you overtake a long, slow-moving vehicle on a busy road? A. Flash your headlights for the oncoming traffic to give way. B. Follow it closely and keep moving out to see the road ahead. C. Keep well back until you can see that it's clear. D. Stay behind until the driver waves you past. Correct answer. C. Keep well back until you can see that it's clear. Explanation. When you're following a long vehicle, stay well back so that you can get a better view of the road ahead. The closer you get, the less you'll be able to see the road. Be patient and don't take a gamble. Only overtake when you're certain that you can complete the maneuver safely. 24. How would you identify a section of road used by trams? A. There would be a different surface texture. B. There would be metal studs around it. C. There would be yellow hatch markings around it. D. There would be zigzag markings alongside it. Correct answer. A. There would be a different surface texture. Explanation. Trams may run on roads used by other vehicles and pedestrians. The section of road used by trams is known as the reserved area and should be kept clear. It usually has a different surface, edged with white lane markings. 25. What should you do immediately after joining a motorway? A. Keep in the left-hand lane. B. Position your vehicle in the center lane. C. Readjust your mirrors. D. Try to overtake. Correct answer. A. Keep in the left-hand lane. Explanation. Stay in the left-hand lane long enough to get used to the higher speeds of motorway traffic before considering overtaking. 26. You're on a well-lit road at night, in a built-up area. How will using dipped headlights help? A. You can be easily seen by others. B. You can go at a much faster speed. C. You can see further along the road. D. You can switch to main beam quickly. Correct answer. A. You can be easily seen by others. Explanation. You may be difficult to see when you're traveling at night, even on a well-lit road. If you use dipped headlights rather than side lights, other road users should be able to see you more easily. 27. An injured person has been placed in the recovery position. They're unconscious but breathing normally. What else should be done? A. Check their airway remains clear. B. Give them a hot sweet drink. C. Place their arms by their side. D. Press firmly between their shoulders. Correct answer. A. Check their airway remains clear. Explanation. After a casualty has been placed in the recovery position. Make sure their airway remains open and monitor their condition until medical help arrives. Where possible, don't move a casualty unless there's further danger. 28. Which of these signs shows that you're entering a one-way system? The correct answer. B. Explanation. If the road has two lanes, you can use either lane and overtake on either side. Use the lane that's more convenient for your destination unless signs or road markings indicate otherwise. 29. What's the minimum time gap you should leave when following a vehicle on a wet road? A. 4 seconds. B. 1 second. C. 3 seconds. D. 2 seconds. Correct answer. A. 4 seconds. Explanation. Water will reduce your tire's grip on the road. The safe separation gap of at least 2 seconds in dry conditions should be doubled to at least 4 seconds, in wet weather. 30. You're on a good, dry road surface. 
your brakes and tires are good. What's the typical overall stopping distance at 40 miles per hour? A. 23 meters, 75 feet. B. 36 meters, 118 feet. C. 53 meters, 175 feet. D. 96 meters, 315 feet. Correct answer. B. 36 meters, 118 feet. Explanation. Stopping distances are affected by a number of variables. These include the type, model and condition of your vehicle, the road and weather conditions, and your reaction time. Look well ahead for hazards and leave enough space between you and the vehicle in front. This should allow you to pull up safely if you have to, without braking sharply. 31. A casualty has an injured arm. They can move it freely but it's bleeding. Why should you get him to keep it in a raised position? A. It will ease the pain. B. It will help him to be seen more easily. C. It will help to reduce the blood flow. D. To stop them touching other people. Correct answer. C. It will help to reduce the blood flow. Explanation. If a casualty is bleeding heavily, raise the limb to a higher position. This will help to reduce the blood flow. Before raising the limb, you should make sure that it isn't broken. 32. There's a bus lane on your left. The signs show no times of operation. What does this mean? A. The lane is in operation 24 hours a day. B. The lane is only in operation at peak times. C. The lane is only in operation during daylight hours. D. The lane isn't in operation. Correct answer. A. The lane is in operation 24 hours a day. Explanation. Bus lane signs show the vehicles allowed to use the lane and also its times of operation. Where no times are shown, the bus lane is in operation 24 hours a day. 33. You're driving in freezing conditions. What should you do when approaching a sharp bend? A. Coast into the bend. B. Firmly use your foot brake. C. Gently apply your handbrake. D. Slow down before you reach the bend. Correct answer. D. Slow down before you reach the bend. Explanation. Harsh use of the accelerator. Brakes or steering is likely to lead to skidding, especially on slippery surfaces. Avoid steering and braking at the same time. In icy conditions it's very important that you constantly assess what's ahead, so that you can take appropriate action in plenty of time. 34. You're driving at night and are dazzled by vehicle headlights coming towards you. What should you do? A. Flash your main beam headlights. B. Pull down your sun visor. C. Shade your eyes with your hand. D. Slow down or stop. Correct answer. D. Slow down or stop. Explanation. If the headlights of an oncoming vehicle dazzle you, slow down or, if necessary, stop. Don't close your eyes or swerve, as you'll increase your chances of having a collision. Don't flash your headlights either, as this could dazzle other drivers and make the situation worse. 35. You're driving on a motorway. By mistake, you go past the exit that you wanted to take. What should you do? A. Carefully reverse in the left-hand lane. B. Carefully reverse on the hard shoulder. C. Carry on to the next exit. D. Make a U-turn at a gap in the central reservation. Correct answer. C. Carry on to the next exit. Explanation. It's illegal to reverse. Cross the central reservation or drive against the traffic flow on a motorway. If you miss your exit, carry on until you reach the next one. Ask yourself why you missed your exit. If you think that your concentration is fading, take a break before completing your journey.
36. You want to park and you see this sign. What should you do on the days and times shown? A. Park in a bay and not pay. B. Park in a bay and pay. C. Park on yellow lines and not pay. D. Park on yellow lines and pay. Correct answer. B. Park in a bay and pay. Explanation. Parking restrictions apply in a variety of places and situations. Make sure you know the rules and understand where and when restrictions apply. Controlled parking areas will be indicated by signs and road markings. Parking in the wrong place could cause obstruction and danger to other traffic. It can also result in a fine. 37. Over what distance are you allowed to reverse? A. As far as it takes to reverse around a corner. B. No further than is necessary. C. No more than a car's length. D. The length of a residential street. Correct answer. B. No further than is necessary. Explanation. You mustn't reverse further than is necessary. You may decide to turn your vehicle around by reversing into an opening or side road. When you reverse, always look all around you and watch for pedestrians. Don't reverse from a side road into a main road. 38. When may you reverse from a side road into a main road? A. At any time. B. Not at any time. C. Only if both roads are clear of traffic. D. Only if the main road is clear of traffic. Correct answer. B. Not at any time. Explanation. Don't reverse into a main road from a side road. The main road is likely to be busy and the traffic on it moving quickly. 39. On what type of road surface may anti-lock brakes not work effectively? A. Dry. B. Firm. C. Loose. D. Smooth. Correct answer. C. Loose. Explanation. Poor contact with the road surface could cause one or more of the tires to lose grip on the road. This is more likely to happen when braking in poor weather conditions and when the road has a loose, slippery or uneven surface. 40. You want to turn right at a box junction. There's oncoming traffic. What should you do? A. Drive on. You can't turn right at a box junction. B. Drive slowly into the box junction when signaled by oncoming traffic. C. Wait before the junction until it's clear of all traffic. D. Wait in the box junction if your exit is clear. Correct answer. D. Wait in the box junction if your exit is clear. Explanation. You can wait in the box junction as long as your exit is clear. At some point there will be a gap in the oncoming traffic, or the traffic lights will change, allowing you to proceed. 41. Which of the following may help to deter a thief from stealing your car? A. Always keeping the headlights on. B. Always keeping the interior light on. C. Etching the registration number on the windows. D. Fitting reflective glass windows. Correct answer. C. Etching the registration number on the windows. Explanation. Having your car registration number etched on all your windows is a cheap and effective way to deter professional car thieves. 42. You have third-party insurance. What does this cover? A. Damage to other vehicles. B. Damage to your vehicle. C. Fire damage to your vehicle. D. Flood damage to your vehicle. Correct answer. A. Damage to other vehicles. Explanation. Third-party insurance doesn't cover damage to your own vehicle or injury to yourself. If you have a crash and your vehicle is damaged you might have to carry out the repairs at your own expense. 43. When must you contact the vehicle licensing authority? A. When you change your vehicle. B. 
when you take your vehicle abroad on holiday. C. When you use your vehicle for work. D. When your vehicle's insurance is due. Correct answer. A. When you change your vehicle. Explanation. The licensing authority needs to keep its records up to date. It sends out a reminder when a vehicle's excise license, road tax, is due for renewal. To do this, it needs to know the name and address of the registered keeper. Every vehicle in the country is registered, so it's possible to trace its history. 44. As a driver, why should you be more careful where trams operate? A. Because they can't steer to avoid you. B. Because they can't stop for cars. C. Because they don't have a horn. D. Because they don't have lights. Correct answer. A. Because they can't steer to avoid you. Explanation. You should take extra care when you first encounter trams. You'll have to get used to dealing with a different traffic system. Be aware that trams can accelerate and travel very quickly. And they can't change direction to avoid obstructions. 45. You intend to turn right into a side road. Why should you check for motorcyclists just before turning? A. They may be emerging from the side road. B. They may be following you closely. C. They may be overtaking on your left. D. They may be overtaking on your right. Correct answer. D. They may be overtaking on your right. Explanation. Never attempt to change direction to the right without first checking your right-hand mirror and blind spot. A motorcyclist might not have seen your signal and could be hidden by other traffic. This observation should become a matter of routine. 46. After refueling your vehicle, what should you do to avoid spillage? A. Check that you've used a locking filler cap. B. Check that your filler cap is securely fastened. C. Check that your fuel gauge is working. D. Check that your tank is only three quarters full. Correct answer. B. Check that your filler cap is securely fastened. Explanation. When learning to drive, it's a good idea to practice filling your car with fuel. Ask your instructor if you can use a petrol station and fill the fuel tank yourself. You need to know where the filler cap is on the car you're driving, so you know which side of the pump to park at. Take care not to overfill the tank and make sure you secure the filler cap correctly. So that no fuel leaks onto the road while you're driving. 47. Ahead of you, traffic in the left-hand lane is slowing. What should you do? A. Accelerate past the vehicles in the left-hand lane. B. Move across and continue in the right-hand lane. C. Pull up on the left-hand verge. D. Slow down, keeping a safe separation distance. Correct answer. D. Slow down, keeping a safe separation distance. Explanation. Allow the traffic to merge into the left-hand lane. Leave enough room so that you can maintain a safe separation distance, even if vehicles pull in ahead of you. 48. A passenger's allowed to ride in a caravan that's being towed? A. No, not at any time. B. Only if a stabilizer is fitted. C. Only if all the seats in the towing vehicle are full. D. Yes. If they're over 14. Correct answer. A. No. Not at any time. Explanation. Riding in a towed caravan is highly dangerous. The safety of the entire unit is dependent on the stability of the trailer. Moving passengers would make the caravan unstable and could cause loss of control. 49. You want to put a rear-facing baby seat on the front passenger seat, which is protected by a frontal airbag. What must you do before setting off? A. Ask a passenger to hold the baby. B. 
Deactivate the airbag. C. Put the child in an adult seat belt. D. Turn the seat to face sideways. Correct answer. B. Deactivate the airbag. Explanation. It's illegal to fit a rear-facing baby seat into a passenger seat protected by an active frontal airbag. If the airbag activates, it could cause serious injury or even death to the child. You must secure it in a different seat or deactivate the relevant airbag. Follow the manufacturer's advice when fitting a baby seat. 50. Your vehicle has broken down on an automatic railway level crossing. What should you do first? A. Get everyone out of the vehicle and clear of the crossing. B. Telephone your vehicle recovery service to move it. C. Try to push the vehicle clear of the crossing as soon as possible. D. Walk along the track to give warning to any approaching trains. Correct answer. A. Get everyone out of the vehicle and clear of the crossing. Explanation. First, get yourself and anyone else well away from the crossing. If there's a railway telephone, use that to get instructions from the signal operator. Then, if there's time, move the vehicle clear of the crossing.